Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well. Viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Marty! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Artie and Marty talk about unrelated things for like a half hour mm. and play a little Apollo Justice Agreed. Ace Attorney, everybody. Last time we got through... One, one testimony. testimony. <laughs> one toy. We'll see if we get through that much today. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, we're still cross-examining uh, Q-Tip Man. the studio and Mr. <laughs> Misham was at his desk. Was there anyone at the studio other than Mr. Misham? Well, his daughter Vera, of course. Was anyone besides Mr. Misham and Vera present? Not a single one. Not a cat, not a rat, not even a mouse. The only person who didn't belong to that studio there was you, wasn't it, Mr. Brushel? Ah, ah, I know what you're doing. I know your game. Attorney uses classic Ram <laughs> Ramsden phenomenon poi, end quote. If you intend to suggest that this reporter is a suspect, I'm sure you also intend to present evidence supporting that assertion, correct? In the meantime, let's move along, shall we? He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. So he put the letter away when he saw you? Early reporter gets worm, end quote. That's my secret. I'm not sure I follow. It's the night of the interview. I arrive 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The handle turns, the door opens, and I barge in. Wow. Are you sure that's okay to do? I mean, isn't that an unlawful entry, really? Yep. Mr. Misham sure fate seemed to think so. <laughs> you should have seen him. He crammed the letter into that yellow envelope as fast as he could. I know a secret when I spot one, and that was one. It does seem significant. Well, Mr. Justice? I wonder, it does have the ring of something important. Yeah, okay. The defense finds this testimony vital, your honor. Very well, please add it to the testimony then. Hey, why not? My account comes free of charge. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. And you saw him seal this yellow envelope with the letter? Hey, don't look at me like that. I saw what I saw. Apollo, you think this might be... Our big break. Yeah. Isn't that the one that was broken open? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> what I need to do now is show some decisive evidence. <sighs> I thought nothing of it at the time, of course. You didn't think anything might be wrong at the time? Hey, when I go in for an interview, that's what I'm there to do. Interviewer finds looking more effective than caring, end quote. So what about now? Thinking back on it, did you sense anything strange in Mr. Misham's uh, behavior? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm telling you all, <laughs> that's why I'm telling you all this to begin with. Very well, continue your testimony. I love how today's witness is more competent than my coworker I had. What coworker? I thought you did everything by yourself. Yeah, well, I did, but she was there and she was just like, I don't know how to do this thing. I'm like, fine, then learn. Like, I just taught you. <laughs> I don't know how to mop. Okay, well, it's pretty easy. <laughs> well, no, it's not mopping. She could mop, but she just didn't. She, oh, like, it was an attitude problem. It, <laughs> it was like a mixture where it was like, okay, I know how to do napkins, but I don't know how to do children's napkins, and that's 16 napkins we had to do. And I was like, okay, I guess I have to do that. Then she didn't know where to put any of the tables when we were moving them. Is, is this her first day or so? No! She's been here for months! She wasn't even listed as training on our schedule. It was just like, oh, this girl's coming in. I'm like... Wow, oh, no. Is it Vaping really... Veronica? No, it was not Vaping Veronica. Not her she's, real name. She's been working there for a while. <laughs> no. She usually is bartender, not wait, um, uh, set up. Now that I think about it, what if he was writing a suicide note? Uh-huh. A suicide note? Well, yeah, don't quote me or anything. I'm just saying it's a possibility, you know? So you didn't actually check the letter? Of course not. It was sealed. Contents of can unknown until can is open. Oh, oh, if he broke into it and he's like, what if it's a suicide note? It actually is. And he's like, oh. You can always check the label. Do you think Mr. Misham was writing a suicide note? If he was, that would solve the case in a jiffy. It kind of makes me wonder about that letter, though. Alright. And then it was a yellow envelope that wasn't well, broken into. And it wasn't yellow. Oh, okay, <laughs> so... well. <laughs> Easy testimony. As it just so happens, there was a single letter in a desk drawer at the scene. In a red envelope! What? Whoa! <laughs> that looks terrifying. Prosecutor Gavin! Yes. 
Was a yellow envelope found at the scene of the crime? Unfortunately, no. But Air Forehead, it's easy to mistake the color of an envelope. Not yellow and red. I guess, but not this envelope. You see, it was postmarked already, seven years ago. Well, Mr. Brushel, I can explain that. Drew, right? He wanted to get that letter in an envelope pronto. <laughs> get it out of sight of my beady eyes, right? So he grabbed the nearest envelope and crammed away. And what about the whole red and yellow envelope contradiction, chump? Well, Mr. Justice, have you anything to say about this witness's claim? That night, the victim put a letter he had been writing in a red envelope. It's possible. It's impossible. Um... It, it was in a red envelope. So it's possible? It's entirely possible. But Apollo! We checked the contents of that envelope yesterday, didn't we? Oh, you're right! Yeah! The answer was clear if only I'd given it a little thought. It was the phrasing that screwed me over. As it just so happens, the defense team investigated the contents of this envelope. With, erm, um, the assistance of a forensic scientist. What? Note that this letter is addressed to Drew Misham. Oh? Why would he address a letter to himself? Let alone send a suicide note to himself! Oh, I've been scooped! <laughs> this is not Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. He looks like that terrifying fish. Do you remember, like, you go to the doctor's office and it's like, oh, it's like... It's the fish with the two eyes on one side of the head? That but, one? But it's not just that. It's like, it's an ugly fish. There's, like, always, that's like... like the, all fish. There's, like, the cute fish that's like, oh, look, like, green and yellow gumpy, guppies or whatever. And then, like, you've got, like, the little, like, Nemo. And then it's like, ugh, who bought this fish with the giant lips and, like, four eyes? And it's like, whoa. Four whoa. eyes? Whoa. Which doctor's offices are you going to? <laughs> I don't know. Or, no, it was the library. Remember the the library? Which libraries are not, you going to? Not the one near us, but the one that our mom works at. There used oh. to be this really weird fish that had big lips and like a bunch of eyes. Well, that's a lot. It was of like I'm pretty sure it's just two, wah. and they had things that looked like eyes. Maybe, maybe Order, that was. order, order! Mister Brushel, can you explain this to the court? Oh my, my, my! How could I have forgotten? I suppose this happens to the best of us. Reporter gets old, uh, forgets lots, end quote. I'm still waiting for an explanation, Mr. Brushel. Well, that's the thing, see. After he put his letter in the envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. Was well, it poison? His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp. A so-called postage stamp, end quote. A stamp? Whatever for? Well, to mail his letter, what else? And then, why yes, I think I saw him put it in his letterbox. Yes, it was a yellow envelope, and he put it in that box. Well, apparently this yellow letter has nothing to do with the case. Oh, how I wish it did! Just think if that, if that were a suicide note. What a story! Star writes suicide note in front of reporter. Falls. End quote. Ahem, as I was saying, that has nothing to do with this case. That said, yes, your honor? It makes me wonder about the contents of that red envelope. A hundred thousand dollars is quite a good deal of money. So this was from seven years ago, yeah. So, uh, am I finished? Here, I mean. Am I finished here? I was thinking of, you know, going home to start writing. Um, I hate to state what should be pretty obvious to anyone, but when you catch the scent of a story, you make that, uh, rather unique face. How does he get, like, magically make, like, a pimple grow on his nose when he's doing this? <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily a pimple. You know how- What else would it be? You know how when you Bubble get, gum? like- No, you know how when you get, like, sunburnt? How does he magically sunburn himself? <laughs> I don't know! It, it's like Pinocchio, that's why. He's not real. <laughs> ah, come on! Attorney has active imagination, little else. End quote. Even I notice something and my eyes aren't what they used to be. You know, I'm starting to understand what all this perceiving stuff is about. Judge has active imagination. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue with your testimony. Tell us about the scent of a story. Hey, uh, I'm the one asking the questions here. Y usually. 
Okay. The scent of the story. Actually, it took a bit of work to get a thumbs up on the interview. Reporter Leverage's story gets his interview, end quote. The story concerned a certain case from seven years ago. That red envelope probably had something to do with it. Say what you will, but Drew's talent was without compare. Um... But he's a forager. So you threatened to go to the press with this story? So that's how you got your interview? Blackmail? Well, yes. I, I mean, no. No, 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 no. Uh, it wasn't exactly black. Uh, I mean, I'm not. Uh, uh. Something wrong, Mr. Brushel? Well, look, uh, th this is my story. My tidbit. Journalist's info is livelihood, end quote. I see. While you have me chatting away in here, what's going on out there? What if some Wally Wordsworth or Sally Scooper gets wind of my story? They could be going to the press while I'm going to waste. The court feels your pain, Mr. Brushel. Mr. Justice, let's pick up the pace. A certain case seven years ago? Wait, seven years ago? <laughs> While he's testifying, Mata Hart's like, HOT DOG! Scoop! <laughs> Running to I would be really mad if that's Trucy's dad. <laughs> If Lot of Hearts, Trucy's dad. Yeah, that would no, be really bad. No, him. <laughs> <laughs> not not Lot of Heart. Oh, his, the band's going crazy. Yep, took a bit of work to get a thumbs up on the interview. You like? He's like making those faces in the mirror where it's like, did I shave? <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> the victim, Drew Misham, had an aversion to reporters. Boy, I guess not, not even my considerable charms did much for him. Until I finally got my thumbs up. That is. Maybe you can elaborate on that a bit for us? Reporter Leverage's story gets his interview. Mm -hmm. Exactly what sort of story was this? Oh, a little one, like I said. Uh, nothing more, nothing less, uh, nothing in between, end quote. This is slowly going from, like, guy with, like, Owen Wilson with yeah, a lisp. Yeah. This is going from, like, Owen Wilson with a lisp, slowly more and more towards Grunkle Stan. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is! <laughs> It is! By the end, he'll be like, Hey guys, I'm Spark Brush, I love money! <laughs> ah, there's a big car out of my chest! Yes. Oh. I don't know why you liked that so much, but it was, it was, very funny. It was really funny and random. <laughs> I might have suggested I had a lead on this particular story, but I didn't threaten or kill or nothing, honest. <laughs> Cajole? 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 I Not don't know. Cajole. Cajole! 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 No. I think it's like jalapeno. Like that pronunciation. Yeah, like right, so the H sounds so okay, I think I got that. So a suggestion a suggestion was enough to get an interview? Mr. Misha must have really wanted to keep it under wraps. The story concerned a certain case from seven. I just years realized ago. the dude has an inkwell and a quill in his pocket. Yeah. It's like who, Sarah Phillips. Who uses that? <laughs> it, it's the 2000s. I don't know. 2007? Uh, it's 2007. This game takes it, place in 2026, I think. Who is he, Mulan? Okay, let me get my like inkwell and quail. Like I said, Sarah Phillips. <laughs> Dearest mother. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Dearest she mother. <laughs> oh. That was the worst female British accent I've ever done. Dearest mother. That, nope. that was a bit that better. Was not. That was a bit better. That was not. It was better than mine. I well, can't yeah, you're do a not a female voice. British voice. A certain case seven years ago? Tell us, what case? Uh, let me state one thing, Mr. Attorney, and you can quote me on this. I can't talk about that case. Come on. Well, why not? They're going to be like, it's the DL6 incident. <laughs> <laughs> that happened like 23 years ago. From yeah, this but seven years ago with the... Wait, the statute of that. limitations. <laughs> it's about journalistic pride and staunchiness and credibility and connections. Journalist reveals sources only over his dead body, end quote. So what'll it be? Gonna strangle me? Dead men don't tell tales, Mr. Attorney. He sounds pretty determined not to talk. Okay. Hmm, our chances of breaking his will aren't so good. That red envelope probably had something to do with it. Okay. On the one hand, we have your story, and on the other, this letter. What makes you think the two are related? Oh, ah, uh, I, I was just saying it's possible. Uh, call it reporter's intuition, end quote. Hey, I say a lot of things. You, you gotta pick all of them apart. Be, I guessed. All of them? No, just the incredibly suspicious ones. I see. Anything else to add to that, Mr. Misham? Add to that, Mr. Misham. <laughs> he came back from the dead! <laughs> Say what you will, but Drew's talent was without compare. We might actually get through, like, two testimonies. Just how amazing was Mr. Misham's talent? 
old. Huh? He was so talented, he could paint and be like, um, <laughs> like, he, uh, I can't think of what it's called. You know how when you roll on a ball with your feet? Yeah, kind of. He could paint so well, he could do that while on rolling a on a ball. <laughs> or, or on a <laughs> Very unicycle. Very carefully. Who, he, boy, I mean, hey, uh, he's a star, man, a star. Uh, the flow of his brush is like a great undulating river across the canvas. His tongue color is disgusting. It's normal. It's like strawberry pink. But not, but not like... That's because I use strawberry pink princess toothpaste no, on my tongue. No, but it's not like strawberry, like actual strawberries. It's like strawberry, like strawberry shortcake color. He just ate a lot of raspberry popsicles before testifying. No, but raspberry popsicles would make it darker red. This he is ate like a lot a of weird... strawberry popsicles before doing it. Maybe? Watermelon popsicles. Watermelon popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> Artist paints, <laughs> Artists paints light up studio like sun, end quote. This guy is full of wacky gestures, but that one just now was wackier than usual. He looks kind of nervous to me, Apollo. Definitely. I'm sensing something different than before here. Maybe it's time to bring out you-know-what. That testimony left a bad taste in my mouth. It all makes sense. Nothing jumps out as ridiculous. I wonder what this story he's talking about is. It must have been good to get an interview with a famous recluse like that. Something powerful enough to drag Mr. Misham out of hiding. I wonder. Maybe it had something to do with Mr. Misham's art? Maybe Vera... So I'll say this, this is the hardest perceive of the game by far. Really? Because he has so many twitches, it's hard That's to figure true. out what it's That's true, he's like a twitchy dude. Um... Also, <laughs> if we just perceive his normal face, will he actually move? Whoa, his teeth are... Uh, do not look at him. I'm wondering, like, will his head be like, wah, wah, kind of like, maybe not. His, his teeth are so big. His teeth are, like, bad. Man. I swear, if his, like, perceived thing is gonna be like, Oh, his pen clicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> All right. Stop. Oh, if, you want, if you want a really disturbing one, you perceive this. No! <laughs> I don't want a perceived creeper. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's very disturbing. <laughs> Maybe it's his... <laughs> neck? Okay, one thing I will say, I want one of our perceived things. Oh no, wait, it's not gonna happen in this game. What? I want one of the perceived things to be, you know how like when guys are super buff, they can like move the pectorals up and down? <laughs> you, you can... No, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> no, no, but... <laughs> no, no, I meant like, but you know when people, you look at that, like Maui in Moana or whatever, if oh, that yeah. was his weird twitch. <laughs> that would be great, especially if he had That'd a tattoo so there. so funny. He looks at his toothbrush. Nah. His teeth are so big. Okay, when he moves his mouth, he's like showing every tooth. Even his like back Also, molars. he did not get braces. Hey, that, that's rude. Sometimes people are... Right, is his finger gonna twitch ever so slightly? <laughs> or is he going to... No, it's not that one. Don't press on every single one. Red envelope. Drew's talent was without compare. Air? That's weird. Yeah, that one. It's that one. He goes. Dzz. Where? Where do you want to look? A toothbrush. Like that part of the toothbrush or the part he's holding? I think that part of the toothbrush. But <laughs> talent was without compare. Oh, that's it. But he wasn't. Okay, look at the handle. Maybe his fingers. Maybe his fingers will quiver. Okay, everyone, everyone is sick of you doing this. What are you doing? You, you moved just when we were sorry, going to see sorry. the thing. There was, it wasn't there. Though. Oh, okay, it's fine. Okay. Uh, check his neck. Everyone seems to be weird with their neck. Only Lamehua. Oh. oh, and Alita and, uh, Tiala. Alita and Tiala. Tiala. Never mind. Yeah, everyone's weird with their neck. <laughs> but Drew's talent means he swallows. Maybe? I don't think this should be that hard. Check his pocket protector. Or his pocket. Dimitri Patrovich. I'd say this is the toughest one in the game. I would say not. But... What would you say has been the toughest? 
Maybe it'll be his elbow move? Okay, so all the ones we've seen. We've seen Olga Orly with her neck, which the game literally showed you. There was Wesley Stukfu's page turning, which also the game showed you. There were Alita Tiala's two different ones. One with, like, the ring she's messing with. Maybe his face. Maybe it's his eyebrows. Eyebrows. Uh, oh, his eyebrows are like mine, where they're really weird. Your eyebrows are not weird. My, but mine, I have one that's higher than the other. Look at me head on. Well, Only when I'm expressive. <laughs> when I'm expressive, like, one goes like, Wait! and the other one stays down. Is it this statement? That's the Yeah, it is this okay. statement. Maybe it's his eyes. His eyes are like... Or maybe his nose twitches? Maybe he's about to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> we already had plenty of sneezing in this thing. That's true. Check out. It's a place you wouldn't think to look. His hair. Which looks like a toothbrush bristles. <laughs> I know, it's so strange. This guy has a very weird design for so Ace Attorney. Otherwise, it could be his ears wiggling. You're on the wrong track. Okay, is it up higher or down lower? Down lower. Okay, let's check out his tie. It's like the Dilbert tie. It starts flipping up. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't know. It should be... How far down can we go? That's as far down as we can go. Oh, so we can't check out, like, his hand in his pocket? No. <sighs> Maybe his shoulders go ever so slightly? Like, his shoulders go, like, whoop? His shoulders flex. Yeah. Everyone's just like, man, they're so We can so skip boring. this. <laughs> Now I see what you mean. He's like not moving, which is super weird because he should be. Okay, elbow. I'm d elbow, right this elbow. This one? Yes, that elbow. <laughs> I think he's like moving it. <laughs> he's like, how many times are you gonna make me repeat this statement? <laughs> if I was just like staring him down, bugged out eyes. <laughs> I don't want fan art of that. Uh, that was do not. <laughs> you don't get fan art anyway. Good. I, I'd rather no fan art than a lot of bad fan art. <laughs> By that I mean fan art I don't want to see if it's like sexual. Don't want any of that. Get sexy fan art. You'd be surprised at how how high of a percentage of fan Here's art is thing. sexy fan Nobody art. Nobody knows where you live, therefore they can't send you fan art. That's true, I don't have a PO box. I meant more meant like electronically send it to my email address or something. Oh. Because eh. I have the colorful arty email address. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Is it his pectorals? <laughs> Maybe it's his armpits. Maybe his armpits sweat. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> sweat must much, Mr. Brushel? Er, uh, yeah, well, uh, a man can't help his glands, you know? It's more than that. When Mr. Misham's talent was mentioned, you suddenly began to sweat buckets. <laughs> You're hiding something about his talent. <laughs> Ridiculous. Evidence time. Let's show where Mr. Misham's true talent lay. It just so happens I have evidence showing the talent mentioned in that letter. It's that he makes forgery. Like my attorney's badge. Uh, I can't help but wonder what the court is supposed to conclude from this evidence. Oh. Other than that, you've made a horrible mistake. Man burdens bridge, forgets to cross first, end quote. Wow. Let's try that again. All I have to do is reveal what Mr. Mission really was. That shouldn't be so hard, right? Uh -huh. You do sold a painting. This painting was found in Mr. Mission's studio. There are two problems with this painting. The first is it wasn't painted by Mr. Mission. The second is that there was another painting in the studio which looked exactly like this one, except it was only half done. Then we have a letter discussing a payment of $100,000. Which suggests a certain business operation. The business of making forgeries. His face is like putty. It is like putty. Don't look at it too hard. That is all, your honor. Everyone, please everyone. 
Can we keep this private, please? This is my story, my scoop. Forgery? That's a serious crime. Drew Misham is known as an artist these days. But there were rumors he dabbled in another kind of art until a few years back. Another art meaning forgery? Drew Misham was talented, all right. Talented at making precise, detailed fakes. A fact that certain criminal elements were quick to discover. Criminal elements? What? You can't seriously be talking about... Exactly. I'm talking about forging evidence. The rumors started circulating seven years ago. S seven years ago? I swear, if this guy is Edgeworth, but like, old... Spark brush? <laughs> no! No! Um, dead guy. Drew Mission? Drew Mission. With the, with the Drew Edgeworth was like twenty four. Oh, I guess that's true. I'm <laughs> trying to think of who he looks literally be. nothing like. I'm Edgeworth. trying to think. Of, oh, I could be. Oh no, hemorrhoids is too old. Grossberg. <laughs> that's what his. Name that's is. at least closer. Yeah. Edgeworth. Uh, the weird thing is, I think you're the second person to be wait. Is that Edgeworth? I'm like, it literally looks nothing like Edgeworth, and the ages don't match up at all. But it looks like Edgeworth with a fake mustache. Like nobody will recognize me now. <laughs> No, not at all. So, are we to understand that this letter, this payment of $100,000 was for... Exactly. Forged evidence, that's tidy profit, end quote. Forged evidence, that's pretty fun. Order, order, order! Why, it's like our victim was living a double life. Aha! This is my chance. So the victim had ties to the criminal world, right? He could have had plenty of enemies we know nothing about. This is my first time hearing of this criminal world. We certainly found no criminal connections when we conducted our investigation. Maybe he has two names. But how do you explain all this money? You have to admit there's a possibility of some illegal activity here. Objection. But there is no proof tying this letter to our case. Our case was and remains simple from the beginning. Only the defendant could have poisoned that mug that night. And you, of course. Hey, hey, hey! The only thing I poison is my pen when I'm writing reviews. Mr. Brushel, your testimony to this point has been quite unreliable. It doesn't speak well of your reporting acumen. What are you talking about? My journalism is rock solid. Journalism so solid you could stand an elephant on it, end quote. In any case, let's hear a summarized recap of your testimony. If we can ascertain the situation in that studio from the recap, the trial is over. Apollo, what is he talking about? The cross-examination showed Mr. Brushel didn't have reason or means to poison him. As long as there's no other suspects, then the killer had to be Vera. That's what. This next testimony is our last chance. Mr. Brushel, your testimony, please. But there's probably going to be two... The interview. There's probably going to be two periods of... This trial? Yeah, probably like one here. Then like, oh, let's investigate and figure out what's ha what's happening and what's hopping and what's going on. <laughs> what's hopping? What's happy slapping? <laughs> what's happy slapping good times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only other person in the studio that night was the defendant. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She's admitted as much herself. Yeah. Okay. When did she speak? <laughs> I just realized. Um, this coffee thing is exactly like. The fourth case from last game, where it's like- Third oh, case or third, from last game. Third case? The Trabian! Yeah, the Trabian! Oh yeah! Yeah, <laughs> that was where the worst. You, she's like, I poured the coffee, sure. They're like, she did it! She did it, she did it, she did it! It could just be like- <laughs> Even though Zinio completely fooled everybody. That was Somehow. More, that was more annoying. <laughs> well, and, and, and like, some of it too is, it could be that we have the most ridiculous thing of like, Everybody was knocked out, and then people went like. Everybody crashing. was kung fu fighting. Everybody crashed through the window, and then they're like, "Okay, switch the evidence." <laughs> like going, I don't remember them crashing through the window, but yeah, that's that's fourth, what happened. It's the forged evidence police. Fossil oh, police. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that touched Drew's lips during that interview was that mug, and nothing left the studio after he died. Nothing. Clearly, the only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter. I swear, if the thing that's in his lips only touched the mug, um, and that's the lie, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> he actually went out kiss, sh kissing a bunch of girls that night. Or, or like, he's just like, I love my paintings. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> he was painting with atroquinine paints. That's not a thing. <laughs> no, that's not a thing. <laughs> Although paint, paint, I have heard, is poisonous. Right? A little bit? Uh, oil not... paints, yeah, because the oil is harmful. But, like, not... 0. 0.002 milligrams is gonna kill you yeah. in 15 minutes, poisonous. <laughs> a nice testimony. Clear, succinct, 
And without room for doubt. Ah, shucks. You really think so? I believe this clarifies the situation that night. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may begin your final cross-examination. Right. I still have one trump card left to play. And I won't let this trial end until I use it.